Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I'm going to be recommending some romance books that have a caretaking scene in them. I'm a sucker for these types of romances where one character takes care of another when they're sick or injured in some way. I'm so excited to share with you my recommendations. I actually have a part one to this video. I will link it down below for your viewing pleasure if you want more recommendations and you haven't watched that one yet. So without further ado, let's get into these recommendations. I do want to mention that I won't be describing the caretaking scene in all of these books because it could be spoilery and I don't want to ruin the magic that is the scene in the book. So just know that all these books have a significant caretaking scene in them. And a lot of these scenes are switch being flipped for characters in their mind. I mean like, oh, I like you now, or are you attractive to me? Or something like that. Someone reveals their feelings during a scene like this. One that I won't be describing it because it could be kind of spoilery is um, A Fate of Wrath and Flame by K.A. Tucker. This book centers around our heroine named Romeria and she's actually from our world Earth and she's a thief. Um, but then she gets roped into this woman's life and this woman ends up putting her in this fantasy land in her doppelganger's body in this fantasy land. And her doppelganger has done some messed up stuff and um, people in this land, um, like Xander here, who's the prince, um, thinks that Romeria did some messed up crap to his parents, like killed his parents, but it wasn't her, it was her doppelganger. And so like, she is trying to figure out this world and what is going on and how to get out of this situation. There's a lot of stuff going on in here. Just know that there's a really good caretaking scene in here. Um, and I, I'm sorry the summary was short for this book. It's just like, everything about this book I feel like could be a spoiler and like you want to go into this book as blind as possible because that was the best 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 reading experience for me I really recommend buddy reading this with somebody who hasn't read it yet either because like you'll be texting each other being like oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh <laughs> like the whole time this happened when I buddy read this with Tori from Novel Life like we had so much fun reading this so um I uh, really recommend this one and book two is coming out really soon, so I can't wait to pick that up. Next is Only When It's Us by Chloe Lee, the first book in the Bergman Brothers series. This is the romance between Willa and Ryder. So Willa is on the soccer team for her college and she ends up missing some of the classes for her, some of her college classes. And she goes up to the professor in one of them and it's like, hey, I need the notes. I was missing, I was at a soccer game. And he's like, okay, um, ask your neighbor for notes um, because I don't have them, your neighbor would have them. So she asks, tries to ask Ryder, the guy she's sitting next to in class and he ignores her and so she's pissed she's like why is this guy ignoring me i don't like him now um little does she know that he's actually deaf and he didn't hear her and man when she realizes that does she put a big foot in her mouth and this is kind of like an enemy slumber situation too because writer does not like how willa like jumped to conclusions about him the two of them have to work together in some projects for school and one of those projects is when there is a caretaking scene um one of them i believe they have to like go on this like hike or something and one of them gets injured i believe that's what happens <laughs> i did like this enemy slumber's relationship in here um and just like writer and his whole family is being introduced in here and the bergman family is amazing so um, I really loved getting introduced to everything and I thought that the caretaking scene was done really well because they don't like each other, but uh, someone's hurt. So you gotta take care of them, you know? Next is Shift Just Got Real by Ruby Dixon. This is one of her uh, bear shifter novellas. You don't have to read them in order at all. And this is the only one out of the six that she's written that I actually like. All the other ones are either three stars or lower. So I say just read this one. This one was great. This is an age gap romance. This is the romance between Ryan and Mal. So Ryan is a human um, in a predominantly shifter town. And um, Mal is way older than her. And so Mal's at the grocery store one day and he can send his mate. And he's like, oh my gosh, finally my mate. I can, I can like claim her. She's gonna be mine forever. We're gonna be in love. And then he realizes that his mate is Ryan. And uh, she's underage and he's mortified. He's like, oh my gosh. I need to get away from here so I can be away from temptation. I do not want to corrupt this woman. She is way younger than me and she's underage. So he basically becomes a recluse in the mountains. It's years later, Ryan is now 21 and um, she has like a uh, noticed Mal from afar. Like he sometimes comes into town to get supplies and stuff. So she's noticed him from afar and she kind of has a little crush on him. She really wants to admit her feelings to him, but he is kind of like a recluse. Ever since Mal realized that Ryan was his mate, he like uh, makes sure to check up on her to like make sure she's safe and everything. And so one of the nights he's checking on her in her cabin to make sure she's safe. So he's like in the woods, like checking on her and he accidentally steps on a animal trap, you know, like a clawed animal trap <laughs> and he 
then um, Ryan hears him like out in pain. And so she brings him inside and treats his wounds and takes care of him. And then the DM finally breaks between the two of them and they reveal their feelings for each other. This was a very short um, shifter novella that I really liked. Um, it's a great age gap romance in my opinion. Next I have Phoenix Unbound by Grace Draven. I feel like there's a bunch of caretaking scenes in here because these characters in here get injured a bunch. <laughs> Our heroine in here, Jolene, she's a fire witch and um, she ends up having these powers also that she's able to disguise herself kind of like Mystique if you think about kind of like Mystique from X-Men as like a different person and in this land you have to um, sacrifice a woman from every village in the empire and um they have been burned at the stake and so she disguises herself as a new woman every year she's been doing this for five years so she can save the lives of the women in her village because she can survive the fire so she ends up like escaping afterward and going back to the village when she's done and so Azerion is a slave gladiator amongst the um, empire and he is the only one to notice that Jelena has been here before and he realizes who she is and what power she has and he's like okay this is perfect she's gonna help me escape and reclaim my throne um, because uh, his throne has been taken over by some crappy people. And so that's just what he does. He ends up kidnapping her and taking her back to his village. And since so it's a kidnapping, enemies to lovers, romance, there's a lot of bickering and bantering between the two of them. The caretaking in here is like, I feel like a bunch of instances, but the main one is um, Jolene is not necessarily like completely fireproof. So after she's experienced being burned at the stake at the empire, she has these scars all over her back and she's very sickly. And so when he kidnaps her, he doesn't realize that she's injured and sick. And so he has to take care of her while she is kidnapped by him. Um, there's a lot of things going on in here. Um, I know he gets injured at one point and she has to help take care of him. I love Grace Draven, obviously. And speaking of Grace Draven, there's also book two in the series. It has a character taking scene, which is Dragon Unleashed. This one is about Halani and Malachis. Um, Halani is a healing witch, so there you go. Um, and the character taking scene happens at the beginning of this book because Halani ends up across Malachis, who's been beaten and almost like killed. Um, while she's with her traveling caravan of people, they're at this fair or market thing and um, they come across Malachus's body. Like he's on the verge of death and Halani decides to nurse him back to health. And so he travels along with the caravan while she's nursing him back to health. And he also regains his strength while he's traveling with them. Um, but there's a lot of other things going on, going on in here. Malachus may or may not be a dragon shifter trying to find a magical object that will let him shift into his dragon form. It's just super fun. I really love this one. Like Grace Draven can do no wrong with her fantasy romances, honestly. <laughs> Next, I have Stalked by the Kraken by Lillian Lark. This is a monster romance um, and a like Theta Mates romance too. Gideon is a like Kraken shifter, I wanna say. He has tentacle, like he is able to shift his appendages into like tentacles and stuff. And he ends up sending his mate and it is Rose. Rose is a local witch matchmaker for paranormal creatures. Gideon comes up to Rose one day and is like, I would like to be matched. And she's like, okay, I'll find you somebody. And he's like, no, 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 I wanna be matched with you. And so he tries to convince her to go on dates with him. And while they're on the dates, he tries to convince her to be mates with him and all this stuff. When it comes to the caretaking scene, at one point in the book, the heroine's power gets drained and the hero um, like takes care of her afterward and it was so cute and so sweet so i really recommend this one if you're into monster romances or you want to get into monster romances i feel like this could be a great start for you next i have an ipb book an ice planet barbarian book we have steph's outcast which is book number 14 in the ice home series which is a spinoff to ipb so steph in here um she is one of our human women who has been crashed on not hoth with a bunch of other human women and she's one of the few i want to say four that's not already mated stephanie realizes that there's this guy named juth who is not a part of the tribe you've met him in one of the previous ice home books and he has a son so he's a single father who is kind of like like an outcast to other tribes and so He's all by himself with his son. And so she tries to befriend them. But while she's trying to go find him and see him for the day, something happens on the beach. Like these creatures end up coming across the beach and there's kind of like an earthquake on the beach too. And she ends up um, getting injured. And Juth ends up saving her, brings her back to his cave with his son. And they end up taking care of her and treating her. Um, even though there's this large language barrier between the two of them because Juth does not um, have like the um language download that all the other people on the planet do um and i love a good language barrier so i love that juth and his son end up taking care of steph while she's injured and they uh once she wakes up they start to get to know one another and they end up falling in love <laughs> um this is book number 14 in the series so 
I don't necessarily recommend reading this book out of order, but you can if you want. I'm not the reading police, obviously, but I actually have a video, I'll link it down below, of the reading order you should read the Ice Planet Barbarian series in. This book wasn't out yet when I made that video, it was about to come out, so it's one of the last books in the series. <laughs> um, but I really recommend this one and I really liked it, so yeah. Next I have Neon Gods by Katie Roberts. This is the first book in her Dark Olympus series. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling. So Persephone is about to be engaged to Zeus and uh, she does not want that. Zeus has been rumored to kill all of his wives and so she is very scared. So one day she runs away and crosses the river Styx um, and she ends up coming across Hades in um, the underworld. They end up fake dating kind of like fake getting it on in public um, so that Zeus can kind of like get the hint that uh, she doesn't want him. <laughs> um, and yeah, and Hades is in it because uh, Zeus did some messed up things to him and his family. So he wants payback and he feels like this could be payback for what happened. The caretaking scene in here, I believe like Persephone when she runs away, like something happens to her shoes and she's barefoot or something or she injures her feet and Hades has to bandage up her feet and take care of her feet. Um, and that is a very prevalent point in the book that I loved reading about just because like him taking care of her was so sweet to me. So um, yeah, I really like this one and I haven't read book two yet, but I know it's out and I can't wait to pick it up. Next I have Secrets of a Summer Night by Lisa Klippas, the first book in the Wallflower series. This is a series where there's like four best friends and they're all wallflowers in, the, in like British society. And um, for all different reasons, they're wallflowers. So our heroine in here, Annabelle, she's a wallflower and no one will like ask her to dance or anything because um, she doesn't have a dowry. Like she's not wealthy. And in this time, men did not really want to marry women who were not wealthy because most of the time they were not wealthy themselves. So they're trying to marry a woman so that they could get some money, you know? And so this is her enemy celebrity's romance with Simon who just like picks on her, kind of like a boy pulling on braids kind of situation. And she's just sick of him. She knows that uh, he is a rake and doesn't want anything to do with him. <laughs> the caretaking scene in here is one of my favorite caretaking scenes that I've ever read about ever in my life in a romance book. So take with that what you will. I'm not going to talk about what happens in here because like it is just so good. I don't want to spoil it for you. So it was amazing. And I feel like you should read this book solely for the caretaking scene. And I feel like that scene like is what uh, flips the characters uh, feelings about one another when it comes to like enemy to lovers. That's when like they kind of like shift into ooh maybe lovers part. <laughs> so I really like this one and I thought it was a great start to the Wallflower series. And lastly, I want to mention Ruthless Stranger by Maggie Cole, the first book in the Mafia War series. This book is also on KU, so I know I have a physical copy, but it's also on KU for you to uh, read. This is the romance between Aspen and Maxim. Okay, so Aspen just got out of a messy divorce and she and her friends are kind of like celebrating it, I believe in Las Vegas. And she kind of like is sitting with her friends in like a booth in like a bar or a restaurant or something and it's like describing her like um fantasy that she has which is basically like being blindfolded having an amazing night with a man not knowing who he is and then going their separate ways never to see each other again and so maxim overhears this and he goes up to her friend and is like hey i want to do this for your friend that sounds like amazing i want to do this for her and they of course like make sure he's like legit and not like a creeper or whatever and um they do just that <laughs> They have this amazing night together. They end up going their separate ways afterward, even though they don't want to. They're both honestly so into the other person and they're so sad they have to leave things the way that they are. And then one day Aspen goes into work and she recognizes Maxim's voice and she's like, he's in her boardroom in her office. And they immediately like go to like a separate room together and like reconnect and everything. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's you. And things go on from there. And it is so stinking good. I love this one. It's a five star read for me. This is also a mafia romance. Uh, Maxim is the person involved in the mafia. And I don't want to say what the caretaking scene is here in here because it could be spoilery, um, but it does have something to do with uh, Maxim's ties to the mafia and Aspen kind of being roped into that and people like attacking Aspen because they want to get at Maxim. That's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> um, but I love this one and I really recommend it. If you want to get into mafia romance, I feel like this is a great start because it doesn't deal too heavy in mafia, but it deals in it just enough for you to like, 
whet your appetite, if that makes sense. But anyways, there you have it. Those are some romance books that have a beautiful caretaking scene in them. Um, let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, um, and if you love these books as well, if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any star emoji down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Thank you.